Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a review and tutorial of Lexica AI or Lexica.art. As you guys know, I've been playing around, testing different cool softwares and AI tools, and this is just one of them that comes up on the list that I'm personally curious about, and I figured anything that I really discover or look into, I'll share with you guys so that you guys can decide if you're going to end up using it or not. So first thing let's jump into is just the usage tutorial, how to use this software, how to use the user interface, how to interact with it. So after you create an account on Lexica, you're going to have this home page and this home page is kind of intuitive. You can search for an image. So for example, I can search for an apple, right? And hit search and it could produce some results of previously created apples. Interesting, because it's almost like a newsfeed, very similar to other applications that are out there. If you guys are familiar, I use Leonardo AI. Even Midjourney has its own kind of feed where it shows the different images that are added. And we could see here different images that have been produced through Lexica. Cool thing is you can take some of these prompts, use them as inspiration, involve them in your own images. Even if you're using a different application, guys, like if you're using Leonardo, Midjourney, whatever, you can take some of these prompts, right? Copy them and kind of utilize it. So you see this whole news feed, right? Uh, not news feed, but a feed of images. You have the search function, you have the generate function. So essentially a prompt, you can generate an Apple via. Uh, this will show the amount of images per row. So if you want less images per row, there you go. If you want more images per row, there you go as well. So this little scroll bar kind of helps you interact with that. And clearly you get to see more at a time. What you can also do, is you can hit this little uh, upload an image for reverse image search. So you can search if an image has been produced here or something similar to it. So I can click on it. I'm not going to because I don't need to look up an image, but in this case it has that function, which by the way, I haven't seen any um, AI tools currently have this function. So pretty interesting. Here is this button where you can choose the model of the creation. So if you see here, we have Lexica Aperture version four, Lexica Aperture, Aperture uh, version three and a half, version two, and version uh, stable diffusion 1.5. So we can test different kinds. So if I click version four, it will search all the different creations with version four, which is that many, okay? If I click on version two, it will have, you know, uh, a large amount, right? If I click on stable diffusion 1.5, Okay, boom, there we go, we have even more images. And some of you might be noticing right off the bat, why is Stable Diffusion 1.5 look worse than, for example, uh, Lexica Aperture uh, three and a half? The reason why is because this is a model that has been trained. And in the world of AI image generation, you have all these different kinds of models and you train the model. And when you train the model, right, based on certain styles you like or certain characteristics, um, you can create a tool, right, that can produce certain output based on what you like. In this case, Lexica is the actual software that does the training and it provides it with millions, if not tens of millions of images as data points for things that the AI can take into consideration when creating images. So if you're using a Stable Diffusion version 1.5, it's not going to be nearly as advanced as a model that has specific training so it can produce success in a certain way, okay? Or in this case, more desired art, all right? So you can join via Discord. I personally am not going to, but you get the point. Here we have this generate button, and as you can see, I've already gotten busy on that uh, and tested it, and I figured why not just let me go ahead and make a video as opposed to it. Here we have the history, so this is just the history of all the various images I created. You can think of this as your own feed or a camera roll, as they say. Here's the like section. I haven't liked any images currently, but they would show up here. So for example, 
if let's just say I like this image, I can go over here, hit this little heart icon, and that is now a liked image. You can think of this as like a favorite section where you can always go back to these images, right? So if you just happen to be scrolling through one day, you find something that catches your attention, but maybe you're busy, you don't have the time to go work on it right now, you just simply click on the image, you hit the like button, and it will be saved there for the future in this favorites or likes category. And then of course you have this account section where if you decide to pay for the software, you can go ahead and use it. Here you have the starter plan, the pro plan, the max plan. It's if you're going to pay yearly, that looks at $8 a month. So eight times 12, or if you're going to pay monthly, it's about $10 a month. Um, I personally don't have any of these plans, so I'm not going to act like I, I have them. Uh, I don't. Uh, this is not the software that I normally use, as you guys can see. I only have two prompts created, uh, but let's go ahead and in this video create more. Real quick, I do want to point out that when you just click on an image, it could be even this one, for example. This one is a little better. Um, you have some functions here, okay? So you, this is the prompt, right? You have the full prompt. You can copy the prompt or you can copy the URL. The URL is the URL image. Okay, and you can see here there are different creations of the image. You also have this button, which I can go ahead and click on this. And this is the prompt. I can click open in editor. It kind of adds more function, right? So it's almost like a page just for this. And then I can click open in editor or I can click explore this style. If I click explore this style real quick, I kind of want to show you. This is using internally the image reverse search. So remember when I told you guys about the reverse image search feature? This is kind of similar. So it will show all the different similar images based on that image, okay? So here you have a uh, hedgehog, I was going to say porcupine, but a hedgehog uh, with a pineapple or what seems to be a pineapple, which is actually a really good image, by the way. I think it's, you know, looks nice. Um, then you have images like this like this and so on. So all of these are pretty much similar. Now back to what I was saying here, you have the open in editor. So what is the editor? The editor is the place where you can create the prompt, right? And edit the actual prompt and have a creation. So for example, it says a cute, happy hedgehog taking a bite from a piece of a watermelon, eyes closed, cute ink sketch style illustration. I can add over here, magic pastel colors. So that's something I'm changing. I'm editing to the production, right? And then I could go over here and hit generate. And that's assuming the only thing I want to change. Now, you don't have to add this little dash here. You can add whatever text you want um, if you want to add something. I mean, you might not want to, but you can change pretty much anything and it will do it for you and it will create some productions here for you. And you can see here... Um, with this, you can do a few different things, four different productions created. You can hit generate variations. So if you want variations based on that specific image, you can download the image, of course. You can delete the image. You can favorite the image, right, or like it. And then you can hit this search button. So you're searching for, once again, images that are similar to the image produced. That's kind of a, a very useful tool. Once again, I haven't seen any, any other tools do this. But um, it's kind of a useful tool to have this feature uh, because if you need some more inspiration if you're, or if you're looking for that small change to the image that you might not have experienced previously and you're looking for other opportunities of images to be able to create that for you, it can be very useful, especially in our field of print on demand. Sometimes we might hit like a, a wall when we're trying to think of certain ideas. So, for example, if I look at this image and, you know, what, I say, you know, what, I like this image. I think I can pay attention to it later. I'll hit save. I could even click open in editor and I could, let's say, create, generate a version of this. And then once this is generated, I can search different alternatives to it if I'm looking for something different or just simply if I want to use it. You know, I have I have so many options. The options are all there. But let's say I like, let's say this image. I'll just go ahead, click over here, this little explore the style button. And then, of course, you have the different styles. So, you know, there's a lot of different options with the software. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead into some creating. I actually have a pre-made uh, prompt here that I created in a different tool. And I wanted to do a little slight comparison here. This is a kawaii-style cartoon of an adorable golden retriever dog. The golden retriever is on a logo-style profile view, a happy look 
on the Great Pyrenees face. He is happy and cute looking straight ahead with puppy eyes and the background is minimalist and plain white bobblehead style cartoon illustration style. So this was a little, um, I guess you could say prompt that I put together. Uh, and let's go ahead. And that was using Leonardo, by the way. Uh, and by the way, I do have videos on that. So if you want, I'll leave some links in the description. You can go ahead and click on some of those videos that I've created. Check them out. I think you'd enjoy those videos very much. But uh, anyways, I'm going to take that prompt, copy and paste it here, and just hit generate. I'm curious as to see what are going to be some of the productions. And when the productions are created, will it change based on the sizing of the image? I'm curious to see. So for example, I'll go here with a perfect square and hit generate here. And so indeed, the, 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 the creations are a little bit different. And um, you can kind of tell when we click on an image like this versus an image like this, the style is a little bit different. It might not be as fine tuned. This is a little rough of a style compared to this image, but nonetheless, both are still suitable and usable for sure, right? Something that I'll also say is notice how when I changed the sizing of the image, how the, the core components of the image changed. So you have three out of four images here where the, the dog is in an upright position, kind of, uh, sitting in an upright position, almost like a horizontal kind of canvas, filling up the canvas. Here we have the square kind of approach, which just goes to show to me, if I was to switch the, um, the style of the canvas, almost make it like a landscape type view and hit generate, what then will come of it? Maybe the puppy will be laying down. You never know. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll about to, you know, we're about to find out together. Uh, but clearly there's a difference in the way that the the subject of the art is being created. And here is once again, a perfect example of that. So once again, this, this image was done from a vertical focus because of the, you could see the canvas, how it's more vertical versus horizontal. Um, and then this one was a perfect square kind of size and the images do look more square by nature. And then here we have the horizontal view, um, which is much, much more horizontal than it is vertical. And you can see this is probably the best output there. And then these are, you know, somewhat okay. I can see these in like an illustration style book. And this is just literally a plain cream colored canvas. It doesn't show any image created whatsoever, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but not what we're looking for. So with that being said, this section here for dimensions, you can control what kind of dimensions you like. And very nicely, there are these two images on the left and the right, okay, that show you what the graphic will look like. So for example, if I want it to be a little more tall than it is wide, I'll just drag my mouse over like this and it will show me in the previewer how the image will look. So for example, if I switch to something a little thinner, a little taller and I hit generate, that will probably produce something similar to more of these than this or this. But really, it's the most tall out of all the creations, so it'll probably even be more drastic. So let's go ahead and see that. Yep, and there you go. You can see how that changes the image production. I can't sit here and say always, because if you look at this image, this image would be perfect for maybe even a square horizontal type canvas. But then again, you get the concept of how things kind of look and just the feel of the software. This is a free account that I'm using. And for free, I, you know, you can't really complain about free. It's free, right? So this costs you nothing. So um, is it another tool to use in your tool belt? The answer is absolutely. Uh, I know people who are... Um, they are illustrators for books, right? For like children's books and things like that. They could use a software like this. They don't even have to pay a penny to use it. Uh, it will help them. It will easily help them. They have decent skills to make some edits if they really need to. But look at an image like this. This works for a children's illustration book any time of the day. Um, it, it's just great creations overall. You know, I am curious though, when I went ahead and saw an image like this, how can this image be created when I used a similar prompt? So to, to, and it created this. To me, this image is much more, um, I would say advanced. So I'm going to click create variations. And let's see if there's something we're missing. Um, they have the same prompt. So is there something else that's changing? We need to figure that out. But, you know, I, I, I'm really, you know, I can't say that I know. 
we'll just go ahead and see here. Yeah, so once again, like this image, these images, they're good, don't get me wrong, but they don't look as advanced as something like this. You know, maybe we can go ahead and switch. Okay, we can't even switch the productions of this generation speed. It probably has something to do with paid or free. Let's see, it says here, two concurrent fast jobs, images are public, personal commercial license, custom aspect ratios, image uploads, optional credit top-ups, early access to new models. Um, so it doesn't really say anything about like prioritization of higher quality images or anything like that, which kind of just tells me that, I don't know, I can't really tell why is this image just better looking than the others? Could it just be a variation thing or what could it really be? I'm not sure. Um, maybe if you guys have some information on that, let me know. But overall, it's a great tool to use. You now know how to use it. Um, it's definitely adds some feature to it. Let's go ahead and make a test here. So I created these images earlier of these wolves in a dark forest. And I wanted to see if an image like this is suitable for me to edit on um, Lumnar. And you guys know it's a tool that I use all the time. I'll go ahead and hit download here. The image is downloaded. I'm going to drag it and drop it into my software tool here that I use for uh, upscaling and editing, right? So if there's ever an image that I want to edit or work on, something like this, I'm going to go ahead and use it. And to show you guys what I'm talking about, if we look at the size of this image, we have 23, uh, 1600 by 2300 roughly. That's about the right size. And I'm going to go over here and hit upscale, and I'm going to double upscale. I can, I can 4x, 6x, etc. I can do it even multiple times over if I really wanted to, but this is a decent size for now. So here we're looking at now an image of 4,600 pixels in height, which is pretty decent. I'll go over here to edit, and I want to see if changing the colors will amplify the design. So if I go over here to glow, for example, increase this glow, look at how the image now changes, right? Um, if I go over here to mystical, I can change certain things, make certain things darker, you know, make certain things brighter. And if you look now, we have this before and after of what the image was versus what the image is now. It's d certainly a different style, right? Uh, some people like the style on the left, some people like the style on the right really just depends on your kind of choices, what you like it, you know, it doesn't, you know, there's not right or wrong, just depends on how you like things. And uh, I kind of like it like this. In fact, there was this feature called film grain here that I actually really like, which I can increase the amount of film grain, uh, which makes it just look a little more rough. And once again, if you're utilizing this for, for example, animating a storybook or or creating anything, like maybe even you're creating YouTube videos and you want images for the stories, maybe you're creating stories on YouTube, that's the whole hustle on its own. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, different images with different features kind of do really well, right? So this is ha the highest the film grain can go. I can, I don't like it that high, like I could decrease it to about this much, um, but pretty good. You know, if we look here, zooming in, and we see here the before and after, you can see the finer details on here, how you can see the grain if I zoom out, right? You can kind of see on the nose area of the wolf, you can see the grain right here, right? Just zooming in more, adds a little more texture, makes it look a little bit different for sure. And uh, definitely a cool feature overall. So for me, no matter what AI tool I use, whether it's Lexica, because now I'm going to be using it from time to time, um, or Leonardo or Midjourney, it doesn't matter what it is, even Ideogram, even Dolly, I'm going to be making some edits to it over time, uh, trying to change some things, and overall, then using it for my submission. There's never really a time where I don't make any changes. Of course, I want the changes to be as minimal as possible, but there's always ways to make the image better, especially if I'm going to take it and post it on a website for sale and things like that. I want to be able to put my best foot forward, give myself the best chance I possibly can to make sales off of that image. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video was beneficial to you. Any kind of resource, help links, members areas, anything like that, I'll leave in the description box down below. And in the pinned comment, you guys could check that out. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching and peace out. Bye.